You know, it's funny. I, uh, in sharing these devotionals that I've been reading today, and you know, God's been speaking through and telling me things, and been kind of like, man, I don't know what's in store in this one now. It's like it's been a little heavy. <laughs> it's been like, wow. I've, I've, one, two, three, four, five. I've like read five of them, you know, and and uh, it's like, whoa, boy, <laughs> are we talking like some meaty stuff all of a sudden? Man, it's been like pretty tough. <laughs> I mean, it's like, well, God, you know, you you're doing it. I'm, you know, I'm just reading it. You know, <laughs> it's pretty heavy duty. So it's almost like with joyful but still some trepidation or some nervousness I'm going you know these over here weren't meant to be like the bigger ones that I got right now <laughs> you know like Tozer it's like I expect to kind of like go bam 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 you know and go whoa what was that <laughs> but the other ones were like whoa man they were good it was like even for me when I'm used to hearing things you know that are tough you know and you gotta really kind of like sink your teeth into it and you gotta like kind of think about it and you go whoa man that's heavy duty so i have no idea what tozer may say or what god may choose to speak through tozer to us with but i know that he's taking me to a place you know <laughs> well i love it you know but it's always like but it might take a little bit of effort to get there. Yeah. Be completely honest with God when you pray. No oh boy. This follows the other ones. <laughs> I can tell. Here we go. But O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins and heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I opened my cause. Jeremiah 20.12 <laughs> That's kind of like, go get them, God. That's one of my favorite expressions, is I just, people are always telling me they've got to do something. And I'm more like, hey, sit God on them. <laughs> you know, why do you have to do something? God can do a whole lot better job of it. So I just say, go get them, God. There is a vital element of true prayer which is likely to be overlooked in our artificial age. The vital element is just plain honesty, being real being true. The saintly David McIntyre once wrote, honest dealings becomes us when we kneel in his pure presence. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> then Mike McIntyre continued, on one occasion Jeremiah failed to interpret God aright. He cried as if in anger, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. These are terrible words to utter before him who is changeless truth. But the prophet spoke just like he felt. And the Lord not only pardoned him, but met him and blessed him there. You know, I'm going to stop there for a sec. But, you know, I have been one of the most adamant, whatever you want, preachers you could say, of get real with God and he'll get real with you. I, I as a young believer... We'd go out into parking lots and just scream bloody murder about what I was upset about. And I didn't understand why God was doing something. And I wanted to know why. And I would get real. And I'd cry. And I would yell. And I would stomp around. And I'd act like an idiot, you could say, if anybody saw it. Thank God it was like, you know, I'd always make sure no one was around. Because first of all, I didn't want to have to explain myself. And then second of all, I didn't want to have to, if God was going to deal with me personally, I didn't want anyone else interfering. So... I wanted to know. I was mad, you know, and I got mad at God lots of times, you know. It, I don't, you know, funny thing is, <laughs> I must have gotten old because I can't even remember the last time I got mad at God. I was like, well, I'm not, uh, well, it's just humorous now because I guess I've changed, you know, because I don't get mad at God anymore. <laughs> it's just like, I guess I had it all out. But you should be real. If you're feeling something that you don't like, tell him. If you're angry, if you're mad, if you're hurt, if you're disappointed, if you're discouraged, if you're discombobulated, and whatever it may be, get real. God already knows. Come on. But you are the one who has to be honest. Tell him. He sees it. He knows it. 
You're the one that's feeling it, so get it out and vent it to him. Not to your church, not to your elders, not to your deacons, not to point the fingers at people, not to get involved in some kind of, oh, I need to, you know, list this on the prayer chain so everybody knows my business so we can all talk about it. No. Get alone with God and get it over with. That's my point of view, and that's what I've always believed in all my life, and I still do, and I still tell people that. Do it. Be real. I recall another spiritual writer of unusual penetration has advised frankness in prayer, even to a degree that it might appear to be downright rudeness. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't know that I was supposed to be humble and meek and holy <laughs> when I was real. <laughs> of course, now I'm kind of humble and meek and sort of holy, you know, and God seems to speak back to me and we seem to have conversations, so... I enjoy his conversation in a level tone more than I do in a scolding tone. When you come to prayer, he says, and find that you have no taste for it, tell God so without mincing words. Don't hide the fact. If God and spiritual things bore you, admit it. Tell him frankly. This advice will shock some squeamish saints, but it is altogether sound nevertheless. God loves the guileless soul even when, in his ignorance, he's actually guilty of rashness in prayer. The Lord can soon cure his ignorance, but for the insincerity, no cure is known. We can learn something at this point if we will. If you take your honesty to God and you reality check you know, yourself in at the door and just simply say, Hey, you know what? This is who I am, you know, and I'm working on changing, but right now I don't feel it. You know, I'm not, I'm not ready for this. You know, I'm going to go down on, a, on two knees, you know, and, and just confess my sins and feel so holy that by the time I get around to feeling how mad I am, you know, I'm not going to even feel mad because I forgot what it was I was mad about. No. God wants conversation. There is a time for petition and all the other religious duties that you think you got to do in order to have what you want to do so that way you can be where you want to be when you want to be religious. But for me... Your reality is, what are you in conversation? What do you do when you talk? That's what you do with God. You talk. That's what prayer is. Talk. Conversation back and forth. Now, hopefully he doesn't talk to you as you talk to him. <laughs> or you may never get anywhere. But if you are in conversation and you do enjoy the ramifications of what that means, that means your God is real and that he's alive and that you do have this connection that you know can never be separated so you can share everything that's in your life all that you are because jesus already paid the price god loves you what more can be done or said than for you to just simply be able to share where you are how you are when you are and that's all you need to do so if you're screwed up and you feel screwed up, tell God. I feel screwed up and I am screwed up, but I need your help anyways. If you're happy and you know it, then you, whatever the song says and you surely show it, <laughs> tap your hands or whatever you do, stop your feet, jump up and down, you know, be crazy, I don't know. Just please don't, you know, tell me it's a gift of the Spirit and it's laughter or rolling on the floor or barking like a dog, you know, because personally, dogs bark, people don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the truth. If you're barking like a dog, you're being a dog. Not anything else. That's all it is. You know, I'm sorry. That's why they call it dog barking. Because it's barking like a dog, so you can become like a dog. Or if it's whatever else, you know, that's what it is. Because that's what you did, you know. Now, I'll admit, you may be overzealous, you know, and may have gone over the top, you know, with your own response. But what God intends is just simply for you to be you. So... Hey, if you want to tweet like a Twitter, you know, if you want to beep like a beeper, you know, if you want to text like a texter, hey, you know, God will meet you there, because I've had experiences I can't explain, you know. God spoke to me audibly, direct, you know, and to this day, you know, I still am kind of like dumbfounded by the whole idea that I can't deny the fact that God speaks, because he did. Oops! And there was no getting around it, and there's no explaining it, and it was just okay <laughs> and i'm like the one thing that god could do to ruin my eternity or to ruin to i should say the one thing he did to assure me of eternity and to ruin my 
adversity by destroying my very intellectual, logical intellect was by speaking to me. <laughs> it was like, whoops, I screwed everything up that I was going to do. <laughs> From that moment on, it was done. <laughs> I was like, can't get around that one. <laughs> okay, it's over with. You know, and maybe that's what God needs to bring you to. You know, you need to share your real emotions so that he can take you to the end of your limit and say, oops. And then there he is, and you'll be over it. <laughs> so be real. Be honest. Be truthful. When you do, Jesus himself will meet you there.